What's up guys? I'm Dwayne and I am Black Board Gaming where I teach you about all these great board games that are out there waiting to be played by you and yours. I'm a simple player. Today, I'm going to do a Blackboard Gaming's Top 5, where I'll talk about 5 board games in a particular category that I really enjoy. So, in early 2020, there was a game on Kickstarter that I backed, and that game is called Shiver Me Timbers. This game is scheduled to deliver in the next couple of months, and I cannot wait to get this game in my hands for a couple of reasons. One, because it looks like it's going to be a really great game. It's a sandbox game. But the big reason is because it's going to be a pirate-themed board game by the name. And I really love pirate-themed board games. I, I like pirate-themed anything. You know, I don't know what it is. I just love pirates. You know, a couple of my friends that live out of state, we always get together on the Xbox and we play Sea of Thieves and we'll just sit there for hours just playing that game. There was another game that was out on Kickstarter around the same time and that game is called Dead Reckoning. I'm really bummed that I was not able to back this game, but hey, finances, you can't be backing everything. So, this episode, I want to talk about five games my, my favorite five, uh, favorite pirate themed board games. And I'm going to rate these one to five, you know. So let's get to it. My number five board game with a pirate theme is a game that came out in 2014. And that game is called Black Fleet. So in Black Fleet, it's a pickup and deliver game where the players are in control of two ships. And the first ship, they have a merchant ship, which they're sailing around the board, picking up goods, and then delivering the goods to gain the blooms. They also are in control of their own pirate ship, which they're sending out to steal from the other players' merchant ships and then taking the goods and burying them. The players also are collectively in control of the queen ships, that are going around and sinking the other players' battle sh uh, pirate ships. And pretty much what you're trying to do is gain enough doubloons and be the first to pay the governor's daughter's ransom. And you win the game if you do that. This game is a really cool quality. What I, I really like about it is the base game has these little pirate ship miniatures and it has metal coins. And most base games don't have metal coins. This one did. And it wasn't like an expensive game. I remember when we demoed this at my brick and mortar board game store, it was four of us. And w once we got finished with the playthrough, we all got up and went and bought a copy of this game. Black Fleet is a really cool game. It's just, it's fun. It's just straight fun. So my number four game is a game that really puts you in the shoes of a pirate. And that game is called Treasure Island. So in Treasure Island, one player plays as Long John Silver, and the other players play as pirates who are trying to find his treasure on this island map. Now Long John Silver is in jail, and the other pirates are interrogating him, trying to gain clues to where he buried the treasure. So we're pretty much drawing on this board. We got our, uh, our markers, and we're drawing on the board trying to figure out where he hid the treasure. And through our interrogation, he's giving us clues of where it could be or not be, but we don't know if he's lying to us or not. Because the thing is, midway through the game, Long John Silver escapes jail, and if he can get to the treasure before we find it, then he wins the game. If one of the other pirates find the uh, treasure, they win the game. And like I said, this re game really puts you in the shoes of a pirate because we're, we're actually drawn on a treasure map. I mean, that's synonymous with being a pirate, you know? That's what we do, bury treasure. And the art, I mean, the art, look at the art on this board. I mean, on, in, on this game. This game... Is done by a well-known board game artist named Vincent Dutre, 
And he just really, really put his foot into this art. That I mean, that is really well done. It's really beautiful. And th that game, Treasure Island, I like that game. Now, my number three game on this list is a cooperative game that I really want my wife to try out. This game came out in 2020, and this game is called Forgotten Waters. So in Forgotten Waters, it's a choose-your-own-adventure type board game, and it comes with an app. We take on the role of pirates, and um, we're living through these, choosing our adventure through these five different scenarios. And the app is like, you can read through it, but they also hired all these narrators to read the story to you. And you making choices based on, you know, the decisions you make in the game. It comes with this storybook and you're, you're moving a ship across this map and you're changing the pages to the different locations in this book. And I mean, the art in this game is beautiful also. I mean, this game is really, really immersive. Now, what I do, one, one of the things I like about the game is you get to choose your pirate's name. You know, you roll the dice. And in one scenario, I ended up being Corpse Face Irma. And I pretty much, like, visualized that in my head. I'm like, that is actually a really cool pirate's name. So, I want to get my wife to try this game out. I, I really do. She likes cooperative games, but... She's not a big fan of pirates. She says they are the carjackers of the sea. And I'm not saying she's wrong. I'm saying she should play this game with me. So I got to figure out something to kind of even it out. Maybe, maybe I'll sit down and watch a Hallmark movie with her, you know, as a trade-off. I don't know. So, <laughs> so anyway, that's Forgotten Waters. Now, my number two game on this list is a game called Libertalia. Now, I remember when I first saw this game in my brick and mortar game store. I was looking at all the games on the shelf and I saw the game and I was like, wow, the guy on this cover looks just like Barbosa from uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, fame. And I'm really a big fan of the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie. That's in one of my favorite movies of all time. And so I went home, did the research, pulled up some YouTube videos, and I found Geek and Sundry's Tabletop, and I watched Will Wheaton and Seth Green's playthrough of this game, and it was hilarious. And I was like, okay, I want this game. And I bought the game. And since then, I played it a couple of times. Really enjoyed it. So in this game, each player it has... Um, a deck of 30 cards and they represent your pirates, you know, and they're all different. You got your pirate captain, you got the admiral, you got the brute, you got the mistress, you, you got a parrot in there. And at the beginning of the game, each player is going to start with nine cards and all nine of these cards are going to be the exact same pirate. But as you go through the game, your, your hand becomes different. So now you don't know which pirates that the other players have. And what you're trying to do is divide up this uh, ill-gotten treasure that you have. And depending on the rank of your pirates, they get to choose first. But in certain some way, the, the ranks might have it where your the other player's pirate might kill your pirate or knock you out or whatever. So send you to Davy Jones Locker. So this game is really cool. It, it, it's, it's a take that game. But it is a really fun game, you know. Go knowing what it is going into it, you're living the life of a pirate, and pirates don't hold no favorites. So that is Libertalia. Now, my number one pirate game of all time is a game. It's a cooperative game also, but my wife definitely not gonna play this one. And this game is called Dead Man Tell No Tales. So in Dead Man Tell No Tales, the players are pirates who have finally run aground this, this uh, famous pirate ship that has rumored to have all this treasure. We finally caught up to it, and we have set it on fire, and now we're boarding this ship, fighting the fire in order to find treasure. Now, we end up finding out that this ship is run by a skeleton crew. 
And I don't mean a skeleton crew as in ain't enough people on the ship. I mean a skeleton crew like they're actually skeletons. And we had to fight, try to fight the fire, fight these skeletons, and get off with a cert, get off the ship with a certain amount of treasure before this ship sinks or blows up or we're overtaken by the skeleton crew. I think, like, I remember doing the research on this game and somebody said, yeah, that's a whole, whole lot because there's so many ways to uh, lose, but it's like one way to win. And I'm thinking like, well, judging by the theme, you're on a pirate ship, it's on fire, skeleton crew, you're trying to fight to tr find the treasure, all the while fighting off the skeletons, all the while uh, trying to make sure the ship doesn't blow up. I, it's a lot. But I think it really fits the theme. It, it immerses you into that theme. And I love the little components of this game. Like if you, I did a top five board game components and I just love these little skeleton um, tokens. The little uh, the skull heads that they have as that represent the skeletons that you have to fight. So that's Dead Man Tell No Tales. And those are my top five pirate-themed board games. Now, when I do finally do get Shiver Me Timbers, I don't know where it's going to fit. I'm wondering if it's going to push something out or whatever. But, hey, it's going to be fun trying to find that out. Because, like I said, I love pirates. So, if you like the contents of this video, feel free to hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already and leave in the comments what are your favorite um, pirate themed board games. And I'm going to leave off with a pirate joke. So why did the pirate not wash up, take a bath before he had to walk the plank? Why? He'll only wash up on shore anyway. <laughs> I'm Dwayne, this is Blackboard Gaming, and I will see you next time.